Till now we have seen how to define a stress state at a given point. Also we have seen how to find a state of strain at a given point. Now let's look at what are the relation between stress and strain for isotropic materials. What are isotropic materials? Isotropic materials are those materials that their elastic properties are not a function of direction or orientation. What does this mean? This means that even if I change the direction, the elastic properties remain same. Here we are looking elastic stress strain relations for isotropic materials. So let's take a member which I have shown over here and let me first mark my coordinate axis that x, y and z. Now let me take a, take a situation of a uniaxial tension that I put a stress along x direction and this member elongates along x direction. And if you look at its cross section, what is happening it's to its cross section. So if I look at this zy plane, that is this plane, I can see that I have a compressive stresses acting on this z and y plane. So this we have seen when we discussed about Poisson's ratio. Now let me say that when this member elongates, it produces a strain along x direction. I call it as a longitudinal strain. And we have seen that the strains which is produced along z and y for isotropic material remains equal and I call them as epsilon 3 3 and epsilon 2 2. So these are normal strains which I have mentioned over here whether it is epsilon longitudinal, epsilon 3 3 or epsilon 2 2 these are normal strains. This epsilon 3 3 and epsilon 2 2 is also called a lateral strain and we have related this lateral strain to a longitudinal strain using a constant called Poisson's ratio. We have seen this earlier. So we have elastic constants. There are two elastic constants we have already got introduced. One is Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So the Young's modulus relates normal st stresses with normal strains that we have seen. And he here there is a Poisson ratio which relates the lateral strain with the longitudinal strain. So let me write it down for you. So we have Poisson ratio which we defined it as minus of lateral strain upon longitudinal strain. This is what we have defined what is the Poisson ratio is. Now let's look at the relation of these strains with stresses. So here we are considering uniaxial tension and we have epsilon 3 3 is equal to epsilon 2 2 because the material is isotropic. Now I can know that epsilon 1 1 in terms of Young's modulus and the normal stress sigma 1 1. I can write it as epsilon 1 1 is equal to sigma 1 1 upon E where E is Young's modulus of the material. Now if I apply this definition of Poisson ratio we can find out what are the strains. These are the strains epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3. Let me do that. Let me write it down. So I can write epsilon 3 3 or Poisson ratio equal to minus of epsilon 3 3 upon epsilon 1 1 or you can simply write this with epsilon 2 2 also because epsilon 3 3 is equal to epsilon 2 2. So we can use this relation and can find out or relate these strains also with a normal st stress. So let's do that. So I can write that epsilon 3 3 equal to epsilon 2 2 is equal to mu minus mu of epsilon 1 1 which is nothing but minus mu into sigma 1 1 upon E. So I have related normal strain along z and y direction with a normal stress along x direction. So we can find out what are the strains developed laterally also when I stretch my material along x direction. Now let's move ahead and see how to find out elastic stress strain relations completely. So let's consider a 3D state stress. 
So here we use a principle of superimposition. This is very important to understand. In this principle of superposition, what exactly we define is normal stress produce only normal strains. So you, if you apply normal stress, there will not be any shear strains in the material. Normal stress produces only normal strains and shear stress results in only shear strains. These are the two major points in when we consider a principle of superposition. Let me say it again. When I apply normal stress, I will always get normal strains. When I apply shear stress, it will always result in shear strains. That means when I apply normal stress, I don't see any shear strains to be produced. Or when there are shear stress, there will not be any normal strains produced. So with this, let's say a 3D state stress and let me define it by applying three normal stresses, sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2 and sigma 3, 3. So if I consider the principle of superposition, these three stresses will develop three strains which are normal strains. Let me say that also. Epsilon 1, 1, Epsilon 2, 2 and Epsilon 3, 3. Now we know what is the relation between Epsilon 1, 1 and Sigma 1, 1. It will be Sigma 1, 1 upon E. So I can relate. I can say that Epsilon 1, 1 is equal to Sigma 1, 1 upon E. Similarly, I can find out what is Epsilon 2, 2 which is produced by Sigma 2, 2 which is a normal stress. I can say that Epsilon 2, 2 to be Sigma 2, 2 upon E. Similarly, I can find it out what is epsilon 3, 3. That will be sigma 3, 3 upon E. Now, when I apply sigma 1, 1, that is when I just consider a uniaxial tensile test, I have strains which are developed along y and z directions too. So, we have seen that we can say that when I apply sigma 1, 1, I got sigma epsilon 2 2 or epsilon 3 3 also. Now when I apply sigma 2 2 I also will get the strain along epsilon 1 1 and what will be its value? Its value will be minus mu sigma 2 2 upon E. That That is this value let me write it down. So this value is nothing but minus mu of epsilon 2 2. Similarly, I can I can get uh, epsilon 1 1 when sigma 3 3 is also applied. So this will be minus mu in, into sigma 3 3 upon E. Now if when I apply sigma 1 1, I have epsilon 2 to epsilon 3 3. So what will be the value of epsilon 2 2 here? It will be minus mu sigma 1 1 upon E. And when I apply sigma 3 3, the epsilon 2 2 also will be there and it comes out to be minus mu sigma 3 3 upon E. Similarly, I can have contributions to epsilon 3 3 when I have sigma 1 1 applied or sigma 2 2 applied and that will be related through Poisson's ratio that is minus mu sigma 1 1 upon E minus mu sigma 2 2 upon E. So, when I apply normal stresses, let's say sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, sigma 3 3 which will generate normal strains epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2, epsilon 3 3. So when I apply them simultaneously, they will contribute to normal strains and the total strain will be addition of all these strains. Let me do that. So let's say epsilon 1 1, what will be the total epsilon 1 1 when I apply sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3? It will be addition of all these strains. And let me write it down. I can say that epsilon 1 1 is equal to 1 upon E into bracket sigma 1 1 minus mu into sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3. This will be epsilon 1 1 because of application of sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3. Similarly, you can find out what are epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3. You just have to add these terms together, add these terms together and find out what is epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3. So, you will get a relation between a normal strain and normal stresses. So these are the equations relating normal stresses with normal strains. 
Now, if you look, I just mark these equations as 1, 2, 3. And if I add these relations, okay, let me add these relations. What I get is that epsilon 1, 1 plus epsilon 2, 2 plus epsilon 3, 3 is equal to 1 upon E. You get sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3 minus 2 into mu sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. Now, if you recollect uh, this term can be replaced by a term called as mean stress. We have seen this when we talked about hydrostatic stress state. Okay, So you have, I can write that sigma m, let me write it down. We have defined sigma m to be, sigma m to be, that is mean stress, we have defined it as 1 by 3, sigma 1, 1 plus sigma 2, 2 plus sigma 3, 3. We have defined this earlier. So I can replace this term by 3 sigma m. Let me do that. So I write this summation of strains that is normal strains epsilon 1 1 epsilon 2 2 epsilon 3 3 to be equal to I will I'm skipping this term right now. So it to be equal to 1 upon e 3 sigma m minus 2 mu into 3 sigma m. Here you can see that I am adding normal strains. So these normal strains are produced by normal stresses and you can see that there is a normal stress which is which I can write in terms of mean stress and we have seen that when I have a hydrostatic stress state or only normal strains which are acting there will be a change in volume. So I compare that change in volume with respect to original volume to be a volumetric strain and I can write this term as delta V upon V equal to 3 sigma M upon E into 1 minus 2 mu. So I call this delta V upon V as to be volumetric strain and I represent it by delta and it is related to a mean stress with this constant. Now if you look at this constants very carefully, this is a volumetric strain. I let me write it down. So this is delta which is nothing but a volumetric strain and there is a stress sigma and I call this whole term to be 1 upon k and let me define this k to be a bulk modulus. So this k is bulk modulus whose value is k is equal to e upon 3 into 1 minus 2 mu. So this is a bulk modulus which is relating a stress with a volumetric strain. So this is because this also becomes an another elastic constant. So we have seen in this slide how to find out a stress state relationships when I apply sigma 1, sigma 2, six, or sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, sigma 3, 3 normal stresses which contributes to normal strains and we have also figured it out what is a volumetric strain which is summation of normal strains which is nothing but I can see that it is a change in volume upon original volume and its relation with a stress can be found out using bulk modulus which becomes an another elastic constant. So with this let me proceed further. We have seen now normal stresses how we related them with normal strains using elastic constants. Now we will see what are shear stresses and shear strains. So this is also we are we will be dealing with for isotropic materials. What are isotropic materials? Isotropic materials are those materials where their elastic properties are not a function of direction. So with the principle of superposition what we have said that shear stresses will produce shear strains. So shear stress results only in shear strain. So let me write a relation between shear stress and shear strains. So these are our shear stress sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 3 and sigma 1, 3 which results in shear strains that is gamma 1, 2, gamma 2, 3 and gamma 1, 3. Let me now define a constant G which relates shear strain with respect to with shear stress. So this G is called as shear modulus. So which relates shear strain with shear stress. 
Similarly, I can write it down as I consider this to be an isotropic material. I can write that and this is another elastic constant and let me write another relations. So that will be gamma 2 3 equal to 1 upon g into sigma 2 3 and I have a shear strength that is gamma 1 3 is equal to 1 upon g to sigma 1 3. So these are the relations of shear stresses with shear strengths using an elastic constant and another elastic constant called shear modulus. Now you know that this terms gamma 1 2 or gamma ij let me write it down. So this term gamma ij is not tensor because we defined it as to be changes in angle that is alpha and beta. So that was just a change in angles and we figured it out what is the relation between shear strain that is I defined it as engineering shear strain and a strain tensor. So we have found out what is epsilon ij which is a component of strain tensor and is equal to half of gamma ij. We have seen this and obviously i is not equal to j. So that is for shear strengths. So this becomes a tensorial, tensorial part and this is a shear strain which I have defined in this way that is change in angle alpha plus beta. So we have found out this relation. Now I can write it this epsilon 1 2 equal to 1 upon 2 g sigma 1 2 epsilon 2 3 is equal to 1 upon 2 g sigma 2 3 and epsilon 1 3 is equal to 1 upon 2 g sigma 1 3. So we can find out these relations between strain tensor components and corresponding shear stresses. So we have these four elastic constants now that is Young's modulus, Poisson ratio, shear modulus which we have defined it here and k that is bulk modulus which you have seen in the previous slide. We have found out a relation between k and e. So I can write k is equal to e upon 3 into 1 minus 2 mu. So I, k is not independent. I can write k in terms of e and mu. So k is not independent. This is for isotropic materials. Obviously we are dealing stress strain relations for isotropic material, elastically isotropic materials and thus k is not independent. Now the question is, so out of this k is not independent. What about g? Is g independent constant? And that we will see in the next part.